This round is going to become very clear to evaluate because of two things Daniel told me in cross-examination. The first thing he told me in cross-examination is that I don't have to link it to capitalism, I don't have to link it to ideological oppression in order to link it to human flourishing. He specifically said that when I was asking the function of the Ierson analysis. The second thing he told me in cross-examination is that human flourishing links into the epistemological framework. He said that specifically in cross-examination, his standard of increasing human flourishing links into the epistemological framework. I agree to the standard of increasing human flourishing, the Constitution goes away, that's fine. Increasing human flourishing links into the epistemological framework that's what he told me in cross-examination, and that's what he's extending out of this, uh, out of the first piece of evidence he extends in the framework. Epistemological, or it, it, um, increasing human flourishing links into his epistemological framework. Therefore, if I increase human flourishing better than he does, that is sufficient for me to win the round. He tries to make this BS argument in the 1AR that he can exclude my way of increasing human flourishing based on the epistemology, but don't let him get out of what he said in cross-examination. In cross-examination, he said that his argument can only exclude frameworks. If I link him to increasing human flourishing, I beat his epistemology, because I am basing things in history or whatever his epistemology is saying because increasing human flourishing is based in history. So since increasing human flourishing is based in history, since his first piece of evidence in the ethical framework links into the epistemology, I am linking into the epistemology if I link it to increasing human flourishing. That's very clear. Don't allow him to get out of what he said in cross-examination. So, go to the counter plan. This is going to be a very, very easy round for you. Except that the proper conception of a human must take into all aspects of the for humans can't just be our rationality, but also must acknowledge that we are animals as well as humans and must account for our physical as well as our animalistic and instinctual traits. Except first has which says that the virtues are the best way to do this, and increasing virtues is the best way to account for uh, to account for what it means to be a human. Because to be a good human, we have to be well disposed with respect to ourselves as animals and furthering the species, and also well disposed with respect to ourselves as reasonable agents. Therefore, we have to try to make emotions reason align in order to be characteristically good humans. And possessing the virtues is the best way to do this. It's completely conceded out of the and see this is the first reason you can vote for the negative. In order to actually in order to adequately promote human flourishing, we have to be increasing the virtues because the virtues are what it means for a human to flourish. I'm telling you what it means for a human to flourish, I'm linking into his standard which links into the epistemology. In order to be in order for a human to flourish, we have to increase virtue. So Extend the counterpoint next to USFG will pass Senate 678 that specifically funds states in the juvenile justice program to increase service and rehabilitation. Extend the first competition analysis of the bill's clear that it will turn the juvenile justice system and rehabilitation, which is directly opposed to the criminal justice system, which is punitive. Extend CFYJ, which is Senate 678, keeps focus on prevention and intervention and does not introduce punitive measures into the, into, into the delinquency settings and does not increase penalties and does not make the juvenile system punitive. Therefore, the juvenile system is not going to be punitive. And this is, even if he is going to try to make epistemology linked into my counterpoint, this does make the epistemology because the juvenile justice system was founded as rehabilitative. So if, I, if we do you have to look to history to evaluate contention level arguments, which is absolutely ridiculous, and we shouldn't have to. The juvenile justice system historically was based on it was based on rehabilitation. That's what Senate 678 does. It returns the, to the purpose of the JJDPA, which was passed in 1971, and said that the juvenile system was rehabilitative. So my counterplan meets the epistemological burden with the with the CFYJ card, because the CFYJ card talks about returning the juvenile justice system to how it was in the past. That's what the text of the counterplan is. That's what Senate 678 is. So I meet his epistemology. Okay, now extend the number one reason why we can't foster virtue if we're not going to be rehabilitated. Only rehabilitation can foster virtue because rehabilitation allows individuals to integrate and to integrate into their community and be good people. It offers positive teachings about the kind of individual wants to be worth function, makes negative claims and says what nation did was wrong. Send the second argument, which says that rehab programs are specifically designed to allow the individual to have a lot of one-on-one -on -one community contact, which will make them more likely to instill virtue in the particular individual as opposed to punishment, which um, as, to punish, as, as opposed to punishment, which is very broad. Therefore, I am the only one who can link into promoting virtue. It's a very clear negative ballot right now. But go to the AC as well. So, Daniel tries to extend this Cain analysis, saying that we can't, uh, that we have to achieve freedom in order to have human flourishing. However, there's absolutely no warrant why freedom or oppression is key to human flourishing. I'm telling you specifically that the virtues are key to human flourishing because that's what it means to be a good human. Human flourishing is being a good human. Tell us, teleology, we have to look to fulfilling our function. The virtues are what allows us to fulfill our function. Therefore, in order to be a good human, we have to possess the virtues. There's no reason why we need this kind of freedom that Daniel is appealing to. Also, extend first has two. First has, first has two tells you that in order to be, in order to have eudaimony, in order to truly be happy and have human fulfillment, we have to have the virtues because the virtues allow us to be upright and the virtues allow us to have joy and warmth in life, such as uh, virtues such as charity, generosity, loyalty, honesty, and justice. These virtues allow us to actually achieve eudaimonia and allow us to actually achieve human flourishing under the AC standard. The virtues are what allow us to be free. So if we have virtues, we are truly being, we are truly linking to this conception of eudaimonia. And if you want to talk about history, this was like something Aristotle came up with. So I'm being really historical if <laughs> I'm linking to eudaimonia. So Virtues are key to fostering eudaimonia, which is key to human flourishing, and key to, foster, and key to virtues themselves, which are key to human flourishing and pertaining to its animal aspects and to its reasonable aspects. Therefore, I'm giving you two links into human flourishing, whereas he's not giving you any reason why freedom links to human flourishing. So you're preferring my two links coming out of virtue ethics. I'm the only one who can foster virtues. So, 
He tries to express his extent his oppression stuff, saying he's not actually going to foster virtues. However, extend my number two response to oppression, which is that it's okay if there's some oppression as long as we increase human end functioning in the long run. Daniel's only response to this is that I have to win Hearst House 2. However, he concedes Hearst House 2. He's not making any answers to Hearst House 2. He just, talk, he just talks about how, um, how like, we can't wrong a person and how he fosters virtue. However, he's not being responsive. I'm telling you that only the negative system can foster virtue. This is specifically the two arguments that Daniel dropped out of the NC. So, so I'd say I'm winning Hearst House 2, winning that island to eudaimonia. This is going to take out his oppression. Arguments is okay if there is some minor oppression as long as humans are still allowed to function. Remember, we're linking it to human flourishing, and I'm the only one that can give you the link to human flourishing from the two 